Welcome to the 28th Storms Tropical Weather Outlook for this Wednesday, July 6th. The latest Hurricane Center Outlook shows that there is a 10% chance of tropical cyclone formation across much of the southeast Gulf of Mexico and Straits of Florida, although I really do not think that this will be the main area to watch. Over the coming days, we will be taking a closer look at this tropical disturbance that's currently intertwined with the intertropical convergence zone. And also in the eastern Pacific, they're giving a tropical disturbance to the south of Mexico, a 70% chance of formation, and we'll also take a quick look at that as well. The latest wide-angle satellite imagery shows all three areas that we've already mentioned. We have this developing tropical system out here in the eastern Pacific, and look at the convection that has flared over much of the southeast Gulf of Mexico over the last 24 hours. We've been monitoring this for the last few days, but as we've mentioned, there is a large upper-level low located over the central Gulf of Mexico that is, that is largely responsible for this uptick in convection. And while this is meaningful uh, rain for much of South Florida, this upper-level low is not going to allow for any type of convective organization. And I fully suspect that this upper-level low will remain in place for the short-term period, which is really good news for Florida because they need the rain, and they're getting a heck of a lot of rain over the last 24 hours, and it looks like it's going to continue. But I don't see any type of favorable environment whatsoever for any organized tropical cyclone development. Now, what sounds out to me a little bit better this afternoon is this tropical disturbance embedded within the intertropical convergence zone. It's going to have to detach itself and also live to the north if it wants to avoid the northern coast of South America. But interestingly enough, some of the models are beginning to latch onto this feature just a little bit better compared to yesterday. None of the models show development, but the GFS is taking this more into the central and northwest Caribbean by the seven to nine day time frame. And if it gains enough latitude and if upper level winds are favorable enough over the Caribbean, it could be something to watch. I don't think it's going to do anything immediately because if we look at the latest water vapor, we do see the large tropical upper tropospheric trough draped across much of the central Atlantic and into the greater Antilles. And right up in this region, if all things remain the same, the system will be running into unfavorable westerly winds within the next 72 hours. Of course, that's subject to change, but as of right now, it doesn't look like it's going to be running into the most favorable of environments. But one positive for this system is that as it does begin to interact with this upper level trough, we probably will see more of a spike in convection once it starts to approach the windward islands. And as always, we'll just continue to monitor it as it continues westward from there. As mentioned, it's still embedded within the ITCZ, so there's no surprise that there's at least some low level of vorticity associated with it, although we do see a slight spike here just to the west of 40 degrees west longitude, which is where we're seeing some of the most convection. Here is the latest look at the Sims wind shear analysis, and as you can see, as it continues moving toward the west, it's going to run into a wall of westerly wind shear, as denoted by these yellow and orange colors. But it would be interesting to see that if this trough as a whole begins to migrate westward or propagate westward along in front of the wave, and that would also keep this small pocket of favorable upper level ridging to move along with the tropical system as well. That'll be something to watch, but as of right now, nothing imminent is expected. But I would not be surprised if it flared enough on the infrared over the next 72 hours for the Hurricane Center to at least outline this in their upcoming tropical weather outlooks, much like they did for the southeast Gulf of Mexico. We're going to take a very quick look at the medium range GFS. As we can see within the first day, it's already picking up on our tropical disturbance just to the west of 40 degrees longitude. And as I advance this, you will see that within the next few days, it will be approaching the Windward Islands and the northern coast of South America. This is by late Friday night into Saturday morning. And then you really don't see much on the surface representation but we do have a weak tropical wave slash service low over the central Caribbean by 99 to 102 hours. And finally, as we get closer to the medium range, which is really far out, about seven days away, we see a very broad area of low pressure sitting to the north of Honduras. So that's the overall track being outlined by the GFS at this time. We can track the low level of vorticity a little bit better here. It originates on the model by this little blip. And as we set this in motion, you begin to see that it actually strengthens the vorticity max quite a bit before it enters the Caribbean, but then it hugs the northern coast of South America quite a bit, which would disrupt any short-term development. 
and then if I stop this at the end of the period you see that the low is still here between Honduras and and the Isle of Youth here at day 7. The GFS also keeps the tropical upper tropospheric trough just to the north of the system throughout the period which will make all the difference any slight deviation in the location of that trough could mean either very volatile winds in the upper levels or a fairly favorable environment and as you can see toward the medium range it actually does make the western caribbean a bit more favorable we do see a very weak pocket of upper level ridging here located just to the west of jamaica the latest cmc forecast shows the tropical disturbance taking a much more southerly track as you can see it takes it into the northern or excuse me southern caribbean but then it continues westward into the heart of central america the latest run of the European model perhaps sees this feature the least out of the other two that we've shown. It only has a very broad area of 1014 millibar low pressure out here and it's really not picking up on the vorticity max at all. And over the coming days it really does not see this system. Although if we look more toward the medium range it looks like we have a little pocket of energy beginning to spread westward and interacting with the monsoonal low over here in the southwest Caribbean. So we begin to see a bit of a flare up as it continues moving westward and then by day six it enters the Gulf of Honduras right around where tropical storm Arlene had passed before it intensified into a tropical cyclone once by passing the Yucatan Peninsula and then by day seven interestingly enough we have a broad area of low pressure out here in the Bay of Campeche that would be something to watch and again the models have a lot of trouble with systems that approach Central America because not only do they have to factor in whether or not the upper level conditions will be favorable but also whether if the area of low pressure will have enough time over water to intensify and finally by day eight the model is taking the system into mainland Mexico without any development and finally here's a look at our developing tropical disturbance to the south of Mexico it is still rather disorganized because it looks like some of the best low level vorticity in a possible surface circulation is just to the east of the highest cloud tops meaning that we still have a lot of easterly wind shear the system is not fully organized yet as you can see much of the convection is getting blown off to the west of the low level center at this time and again that's due to some easterly wind shear that's in place in the south of Mexico although the moisture environment looks fairly good at least in the short term period I expect development if any to be very slow over the next 24 hours but it does have a chance of becoming a tropical depression within the next one to two days but either way the good news is that all of the model guidance so far is keeping the system to the south and eventually west of Mexico so unlike Hurricane Beatrice this appears to be moving to the south and west into the open waters of the Pacific without directly affecting any land masses. It also does not appear that this system will have any risk or threat of becoming a hurricane or a significant hurricane. As mentioned before it looks like it's going to be very slow to develop due to some easterly wind shear currently in place and as you can see it's beginning to enter this satellite frame and as it continues moving more toward the west it could also begin to battle some westerly wind shear and some dry air in the medium range so overall the system is not going to directly impact land and the conditions out ahead of the system do not appear to be overly favorable so just to summarize we have a lot of convection in the southeast gulf of mexico that's providing some much needed rain to florida although upper level conditions are not favorable for tropical development and i do not foresee any the main feature to watch in the Atlantic will be a tropical disturbance that will be detaching itself from the intertropical convergence zone as it begins to spread over the windward islands providing them with some rainfall. It does not look like conditions will be overly favorable in the central or eastern Caribbean but that's not to say that this will be an interesting feature to watch down the road as it possibly gets, it in, gets into the northwest Caribbean or Bay of Campeche much like tropical storm Arlene. In the meantime, we're looking good out there in the Pacific. We could see a tropical depression form within the next two days, but even if that were to happen, it looks like the system will remain away from land. So that's your tropical weather update for today. Check back tomorrow for another extensive video analysis.